Now, the mere beaver seems an unlikely critter to change the world, but shortly we'll hear how it's doing its bit to mitigate global warming. First up, though, in this week's science chat, we have a revelation that may force a rethink about how quickly nature can respond to climate change. Joining me now is Professor Steve Pointing, Director of AUT's Institute for Applied Ecology. Hello there, Professor. Thank you for coming in morning, this morning. Some good news about global warming. There's a study that suggests that nature might adapt a little faster than what we thought to the effects of climate change. That's right. It's an interesting study. So to put it in perspective, the, the continental shelf of Antarctica Antarctica um, is about one third covered by ice shelf and beneath that ice shelf is seabed and the seabed is essentially being regarded for a long time as being very s slow to, to, to grow and colonize marine life and the, the dominant life there which are marine sponges are small soft bodied creatures and uh, it gave it a unique opportunity a few years ago when the last ice shelf broke off to have a look at what happens when, when we have a, a negative, negative event and so uh, after four years of uh, exposure of this ice shelf, where essentially we went from a, from a dark, cold environment to, to one where there was more light and hence more production and more, more uh, potential for, for life to grow, we saw extensive colonization by sponges. And this was completely unexpected. So marine life essentially occupied that, that vacant real estate in, in much more quickly than we, we expected it to. Is that because, uh, and I may be wrong in assuming this, I've, I've thought that uh you know, this sort of creature isn't really a sophisticated creature. You know, it's a, a sponge. I don't know. Is that, is that the right. case? I mean, so it can adapt easier? <laughs> much, like, much like in your bath. Um, these, these sponges are, are soft-bodied creatures. They filter feed. So essentially they, they just suck in water from their surrounding environment and, and eat plankton and organic matter. And they, they are very simple. But, but that's also um, actually their strength. So in this case, we think that the asexual reproduction of these creatures has allowed them to, to, to literally expand their range much more quickly than if they were doing it the, the normal way. <laughs> that said, there's also some evidence of the negative consequences too. Tell us about the changes to uh, the migration patterns of, of some mammals, marine mammals. Yeah, this is, this is a great story, Rachel. So essentially here we have a, a really good example of how a long-term data set can, can, can give us a good insight into how climate change is, is impacting organisms. So we have 20 years worth of data showing migrations of everything from plankton to small fish through the water column. And essentially these organisms are able um, at night time to, to go down to anything between two and 600 meters depth uh, to feed. And then at, uh, during, uh, during, they like to avoid predation basically. So um, what's interesting about these creatures is as they descend, they're entering uh, what are increasingly oxygen minimum zones. These are areas where oxygen has been reduced from its normal level. And this is obviously dangerous for organisms that breathe oxygen, re rely on it to, to survive. And so what we're finding is that um, not only is this impacting where these organisms are able to migrate, but more worryingly, they're consuming the oxygen in these zones, anything up to 40% of the remaining oxygen, and exacerbating the problem. So the, the organisms themselves are imparting a negative feedback to this, this uh, unfortunate scenario. Indeed. Well, thank goodness then for the humble beaver, because uh, <laughs> it's emerging as something of an unlikely hero, isn't it, in the fight against climate change? Yes, it's great. So charismatic. It's a shame we don't have beavers here. Um, yes. <laughs> essentially, what beavers do um, is beavers create dams to try and trap food. And a consequence of, of creation of these dams is that they increase biodiversity, especially of, of interesting species like salmon and trout. And they, they also, of course, increase the trapping of sediments and, and, and timber in these dams. And what the study has shown is that where dams are occupied by beavers, the trapping of sediments is, is accounting for about 23% of the carbon in an ecosystem, which is essentially a sink or a trap for carbon that otherwise might be converted to greenhouse gases. Whereas if those dams are unoccupied, this is only about 8% carbon trapped there. So the beavers actually have a real positive effect on mitigating <laughs> the greenhouse gas emission. Aren't they brilliant? I, I have to say they look very cute, um, yeah. but I wouldn't like to swim by one. They really look like large rats, don't they? they and they've got big <laughs> teeth too. Yes. They've got very big teeth, <laughs> indeed. All right, Professor uh, Steve Pointing, thank you for your time and your analysis this morning. My pleasure.